Yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, before I start, let me tell you, it feels fantastic to be on a TEDx stage because I always wanted to become a TEDx speaker. Uh, and to be honest, it feels even a little bit like it was always meant to be that I'm here today. And it even feels like it was meant to be that you are here. Yeah, I'm serious. But let me get back to that a little bit later and start my story a few years back, uh, probably at one of the best times of my life when I used to live in Sydney, Australia. Uh, to be more precise, I was living in Manly, which is a little suburb at the northern beaches of Sydney. Beautiful. So every day I, when I went back uh, out of my balcony, I was greeted by the sun and Shelley Beach. And almost every day, or at least every second day, I met with my mates and we went for a sunrise stand-up paddleboard session at the Bauer, that's the little bay in Manly. And this is amazing. I, I still miss it badly because you, you paddle out there, the sun is rising straight out of the ocean. And if you are lucky enough that sometimes you even uh, some dolphins are crossing your way. So it's magic. But this one day, uh, it was back in Aussie summer 2008, uh, it was not a dolphin that crossed my way on the stand-up pedal board. It was uh, this plastic bag. So I took the plastic bag back on my board, brought it back to the shore, chucked it in a bin, and thought, ah, doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel right. Uh, and I have to admit that was back in 2008. So at that time, no one was talking about ocean plastic pollution. There, maybe there were a few communities like the Sea Shepherd Foundation or the local surf clubs. They were cleaning up beaches, but there was no big media about it. And there was no big brand uh, covering the topic. So I was now standing there with my plastic bag and thought, ah, not good. I want to do something about it. I want to have an idea, a creative idea. I want to change th something. I want to work on a project that protects the oceans from plastic pollution. But to make a very long story short, I had no bloody idea what to do. So years went by. 2011, uh, me and my wife, we decided to go back to Austria, back to Linz, and I started to work for Runtastic. I think I don't have to explain here in Linz what Runtastic is, but maybe if someone is watching this talk online. So even at that time, 2011, 2012, Runtastic was already one of the world's biggest mobile health and fitness providers engaging runners all over the, the world, uh, tracking their runs with the, at that time, called Runtastic Running App. So I was now working for a real digital powerhouse. And I still had this spark in my mind that I wanted to protect the oceans, right? And now I had millions of users I could reach out to, but still I had no plan what to do. So the next big boom actually happened in 2015 uh, when the Adidas group acquired Runtastic for a decent amount of money, which not only made our founders happy, it also made us happy, the team. And I can still remember uh, when our founders, Florian, Chris, René and Alfred asked us to come in the working cafe and they told us that we now would not be only working for Runtastic anymore, but now we would be working for one of the biggest and best sports brands in the world, Adidas. Which was amazing, at least for me it was like, boom, that's it. I'm now working for one of the biggest brands in the world, I have all the brand power that can help me to make my ideas even bigger. So, on one side there was the digital power, the brand power, and still my the spark in my mind, protecting the oceans, but still I had no plan. I had no idea what to do. 
The one moment that changed it all uh, was then end of 2015, COP21 in Paris, climate conference, when Eric Littke, he was at that time the brand president and CMO of Adidas and Cyril Gutsch, founder of uh, Pali for the Oceans, launched uh, the amazing Adidas Pali collaboration and presented this amazing product, a running shoe made out of recycled ocean plastic, designed with fish nets collected by Sea Shepherd. I'm wearing the shoe, by the way, today. Uh, and this was the moment. So I thought, wow, he has the product. And I still had this spark in my mind. I wanted to change something and protect the oceans. And now there was this fantastic product. And things just fell into place like in a big puzzle. And together with my good friend named Rob, Josh Schaeffer from San Francisco, I co-created the Run for the Oceans campaign, which is a digital running campaign uh, engaging runners from all over the world to run for the oceans. So the mechanism was very simple. Runtastic engages users to track their runs. Adidas converts the distance into a donation and Pali for the Oceans receives the donations to clean up beaches all over the world. Back in 2016, when I created the campaign, uh, we could make 60,000 people run for the oceans. But over the years, we could engage more than 14 million people run for the oceans all over the world. So based on participants, it's actually the biggest sustainability campaign in the world. But before I now tell you even more amazing achievements of Run for the Oceans, I thought I step one, uh, go, uh, go one step back and talk about why we actually run for the oceans. So why not why? Uh, yeah, why do we actually run for the oceans? And really thought about how could I explain it to you? And I thought there is no better way to tell you a little bit about my honeymoon in Bali. Has anyone been to Bali? Yeah, yeah Bali, it is fantastic. So I love Bali. So it has white sandy beaches, it has rice fields, coffee plants. I personally love most the high spirituality in Bali. So, and you can feel that. So the Balinese people even call Bali Mother Bali, and you can really feel this deep connection between people and nature. We probably all know Bali from photos like this, a beautiful girl on a beautiful beach. She's probably a yoga teacher. Yeah, don't get me wrong, there are nothing wrong with the yoga teacher teachers, I'm even married to one. Uh, <laughs> but I'm sure you can feel that this is not the face of Bali I want to talk about today, because this is the face of Bali I want to talk about today. Because this is the very same time, the same beach, but the picture was just taken from a different perspective. So Bali, as we know it from Instagram, does not always look like the Bali you see when you are there, because Bali's beaches are covered with plastic trash. So when I normally um, go on a place at the ocean for vacation, what I always do is for sunrise, I go to the beach because I want to go on a walk. And when I did that in Bali, this is what I found. So the entire beach is covered with plastic trash, which the oceans just spills uh, overnight. I saw everything. I saw cups, I saw bottles, I saw fishnets, I saw toys. But what do you believe was the one thing I found most on the beach? It was shoes. And also like my friends from CleanHub, it's a great uh, a startup based in Berlin who do a lot with uh, ocean plastic uh, pollution and cleaning up beaches. When they got asked just recently which one item they find most when they do beach cleanups, it was shoes. 
And I still can remember this one uh, morning walk. Uh, when you go for a walk uh, on the beach in Bali, there are a lot of stray dogs everywhere. And they just come and they want to play with you. It's, it's, it's super cute. So you're surrounded by stray dogs. And this one day, uh, this little stray dog came to, to me. He wanted to play with me. And he brought me this, this midsole, so the piece of a shoe. I always bring it with me when I talk about Run for the Oceans because it is a reminder why we do, do that. And it was also, this moment was the very moment where I, for the first time, really understood what Adidas means when they say, we know that we are part of the problem, but now we want to become an even bigger part of the solution. And to be honest, I love Run for the Oceans. And it made so many great achievements, like with all the brand power from Adidas, you know, that the biggest, tall, the tallest buildings in the world, like Bush Khalifa, were branded uh, with Run for the Oceans. Or when we had a Run for the Oceans event in New York City, the Empire State Building turned blue because of our campaign. That was amazing. My biggest idols, like David Beckham, I, I, I remember when I was young, I went to the hairdresser, like so many others, and said, hey, <laughs> I want to look like David Beckham. And now he was running with my idea on the chest. And also the GOAT, Lionel Messi, was now promoting my idea. So that feels good. That makes me proud. But even more than that, it makes me proud that we could achieve global impact with Run for the Oceans. Because our friends from Pali, they cleaned up beaches from India to Southeast Asia, from Bali to the Maldives. And that was probably the biggest achievement that Run for the Oceans has to date. But was this not all a coincidence? that I created this campaign, or that I'm standing here today, so remember when, how I started this talk. No, I don't think so. I always wanted to be a TEDx speaker. I can remember last TED talk I was, it was back in 2014 with my weird friend Dagobert, and yeah, we never made it onto the stage, but at least to the bar. <laughs> so it was still a great TEDx talk, but uh, I thought, one day I want to be on stage, that's for sure. And yeah, thanks so much, TEDx Linz, that they are having me today on the stage, uh, because it's, it's fantastic. But I also know that I would never be here today if I wouldn't have created Run for the Oceans. And there would not be Run for the Oceans if Eric Littke and Cyril Gutsch wouldn't have launched uh, this amazing Adidas Pali product back in 2015 at COP21. I probably would have never heard about this if I wouldn't have been working for Adidas or if Adidas wouldn't have acquired Rantastic back in 2015. And even that wouldn't be very relevant to me if I wouldn't have been working for Rantastic, right? And I wouldn't have been working for Rantastic if I wouldn't have been in Australia because Rantastic hired me because of my international experience in the first place. And if I wouldn't have been in Australia, I would never have come across this little plastic bag, which was the very first spark of my idea. So at that time, back in 2008 in Manly, I could have never imagined where this idea one day will lead me. But as the amazing Steve Jobs, we all know this quote, uh, once said, you cannot connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you somehow has, have to trust that your dots will connect in the future. And this is what I did. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today. Maybe to sum it up, uh, let me share my three main learnings with you in this entire process. 
So probably the first thing I learned is always be authentic. I could not be a software developer or a singer and songwriter, an architect, uh, because I would have brutally failed. So I always wanted to make the world a better place with a creative idea. So this is my advice. Always listen within what is your passion and try to do something with your passion and not with something that someone else is telling you to do because it's a trend or, or you can make a lot of money. So always be, be true to yourself. Learning number two, uh, we heard it so many times today, always be bold. Think big. Our world is in a terrible state at the moment. Forests are burning, glaciers are melting, the oceans are drowning in plastic pollution. The world's most iconic species are even disappearing for good. And how we also heard in, in, in Dani's amazing talk earlier today, humanity is suffering because of political regimes and, and war zones and even climate change. So we need big ideas. We need a lot of big ideas. So think about what you can do with your passion and be bold and think it really big. The world needs it. And I don't even say that we have to save the world, but at least we shouldn't fuck it up for the next generations. And last but not least, my third learning is always be open. Always be open to what you see, whom you meet, what you listen to, maybe even think about the, the, the guy who's sitting next to you today. Because maybe this moment or this person is this one dot in your story. And yeah, I, I really hope that at the next TEDx event, I'm uh, back in the audience and then I can listen to your story. Thank you very much. <laughs>